Communication Server 14 is a very big release for us. It's the next release for Office Communication Server. It's all about communication and collaboration, and of course, enterprise voice. Uh, communication Server 14 is integrated deeply into Office, SharePoint, and Exchange. So I'm going to show to you for the first time the full feature set of Communication Server 14. Now, that's what we are disclosing here at TechEd. But uh, today in this demo, I'll show you uh, uh, some key new features that are there. Now, what you're seeing here is the new Communicator application. Communicator has emerged as a major new office application in this decade, and it's broadly adopted by customers. Now, what you will see, um, if you're familiar with Communicator, earlier you used to see those round presence indicators. Uh, now, Communicator is a lot more personal, and you'll see pictures wherever you saw just the names which came from Active Directory before. And uh, these pictures actually come from SharePoint, so you don't have to go create a separate store. Um, we automatically pick those up. And uh, also, you will see that the whole experience is a lot more social. Now, uh, let me quickly give you a, a quick run through this, and then we'll talk about some features. So this is, of course, the view where you can find contacts, whether they be in Outlook, whether they be from your gal. Um, this is also uh, the next place is where you can look at activities uh, of the people in your contact list. Now, this is a lot like uh, what you would typically see in applications like Facebook, where you know, people are uh, either changing the notes or changing their status, or you can see their picture being changed, their location being changed. Communicator will automatically pull that information together and display that to you in the activity feed. We also have a communication history, which is right there, so that you can pick up on all communications that you might have had in the past, whether they be instant messages, conferences, audio conference calls, video sessions. You can simply click on them and continue that conversation. And then, of course, last but not the least, a communicator is a complete soft phone. Now, lots of customers are already adopting communicator for voice uh, as a soft phone. In fact, Inside Microsoft, we have 74,000 users no longer on a PBX who are using Communicator and the hard phones that are there for their voice capability. I, I use it every day. In fact, this afternoon, I have a conference call back to Microsoft, and I'll do a, I will do actually a full video call back with my PC as the way I connect back and, and, and communicate with another meeting. Exactly. And you can not only do it from your laptop, of course, but the conferencing capability, which is in Communication Server 14 and in R2 before that, uh, Microsoft has 93% of their global audio conferencing traffic now being supported by uh, Communication Server, which represents about 59 million minutes of audio conferencing a month and is saving us more than a million dollars a month just on that capability. Now, inside this uh, phone environment, you also can see your voicemails, which are coming straight out of Exchange through unified messaging. And you can, of course, play them here, or you can click on this, and it'll take you to the tra transcribed voicemail message, which is there. So let's talk about some of the new features that are there. Now, in the past, you were always able to look up people uh, in this list. You could look up uh, distribution lists and so on. But one of the new capabilities we have is trying to find people who are sort of experts in a particular area, but you really don't know their name. Uh, for example, you know, I came into TechEd last night, so I want to find out if there's somebody who can help me with the ways around TechEd. So let me uh, type in TechEd here, and uh, let me type skill. And of course, uh, now using SharePoint, we are going to try and find if there are people who are skilled in TechEd. Now, this expertise can either be published by the person themselves, so they can go put in keywords that they're experts in, but also SharePoint has an engine built into it where it infers expertise about people. And it does that based on the documents you write, the documents you read, the emails you're writing, etc. And using some Bayesian engine which was developed inside Microsoft Research, it'll infer expertise about you. So all of it can happen automatically. So I got a few people, I can see their presence. Um, let me find a person who at least claims to be a guru about tech ed. Well, I see uh, one person here who's Jamie Stark. And uh, you now one of the things you will also see here is this contact card, which pops up right next to when I hover over a name. Now, I, in this contact card, you of course see uh, the note that the person has set in. 
And uh, you will also see that with one click, I can start different kinds of communications with this person. Now, one of the good things about this contact card is that wherever you are in office, wherever you see a name, you can hover on that name and you will see a contact card. And with that contact card, you can with one click get into a communication with that person. So presence is right here, you can see the note, and then uh, you can start different kinds of communication. Um, if you open it up, you can see that the contact card is also getting some information out of Active Directory and displaying it right there for you. It even picks up the org chart if it's been populated in AD. Now, let me see if uh, I want to talk to the StackEd guru to find out some stuff. So let me make a phone call to, uh, to Jamie. Good deep, how you doing? Hi, Jamie, how are you? Oh, I'm well. Great uh, to hear from you. Yeah, are you sure you're well? I heard that uh, you stumbled into your hotel lobby at 7 in the morning from Bourbon Street uh, asking for a wake-up call at 6 a.m. Yeah, very funny. Well, let me just prove it to you here with a little bit of video. Oh, great. Well, uh, I guess you do look okay. The makeup lady did a good job on you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no worries. I got a little bit of coffee. I'm fine. <laughs> That's great. Well, so you see, uh, you know, video capability is just a click away right inside uh, from your contact card, which is all built into Communicator. But we also have uh, the ability to do a more higher resolution video. Uh, what you're seeing here is high definition 720p video, which is built into Communication Server 14. Now, this isn't supported with you know, the $300,000 solutions that you might have seen. This is there for every user to use on their laptop or desktop using a camera from one of our partners. Now, in this case, this is a $50 camera capable of doing 720p. He's using another camera from another partner, which is slightly more expensive, but now you can see a whole ecosystem of cheap, high-definition webcams that is gonna happen around Communication Server 14. I think now what we're trying to do is make sure that, that everybody has the ability to experience a great video uh, conferencing system, regardless of cost. So making it available in a very cost-effective way. And as, as Gurdip said, really building an ecosystem to make these things available. And we do expect in the not-too-distant future to see HD cameras being built into laptops. That's exactly right. And in this case, uh, Jamie's, of course, is using a handset because we wanted to make sure the audio performance, given the, this room from, the sound from this room is actually uh, visible. But uh, you can actually be speaking hands-free as well right into your laptop. Yeah, and even better, you know, you as administrators have the ability to put policy all over your network to where video calls and voice calls you know, can be, can be managed such that if you have wide area network connections and don't have sufficient bandwidth for high def video, you can make sure that that's all policied in the same manner that you policy Exchange and SharePoint. So it's a really, really flexible solution for your network as well. That's great. So let's go back to a more collaboration experience. Uh, now, you mentioned that uh, you wanted uh, me to look at something. Yeah, you know, you've got a presentation here coming up in a few hours and uh, marketing's been looking through edits, of course, that we wanted to uh, we wanted to talk through with you. So just because we're in this conversation, of course, now we can just drop in a PowerPoint here. I'm uploading it into our uh, into our conference. You should be seeing it shortly. We um, happen to notice just a couple little things that we wanted to uh, that we wanted to address here. Now, if you don't mind. No, I don't mind. Now, one of the, while the while the PowerPoint which is being uploaded is showing up you can see that there isn't a, a totally different experience for collaboration. Right into one application, you have both from, right, starting from instant messaging, more the ad hoc capability, and more capabilities which are around PowerPoint, whiteboard sharing, et cetera, et cetera. So it seems your computer's a little sluggish this morning. Yeah, and my computer hasn't had the same amount of coffee that I have had this morning. So let's, let me do this. Let me take, the, take us through another part which I wanted to actually find out, which is what I need and you know I'm more important, which is really around, I want to find my way around TechEd. So let's talk about this whiteboard here. A whiteboard is also built in, and, and you, now I want to basically doodle or you know, share some pictures or create some content here. The whiteboard capability is right where, uh, right a click away for me. So Jamie, do you want to show me how I can find my way around TechEd? Yeah, absolutely. So this is the third floor of TechEd, and I uh, just wanted you to be aware that the escalators are going to be uh, right up here, and then from the uh, from there you're going to be uh, going to be cruising around, walking from a set of escalators over to a set of rooms. 
So, um, so it's a it's a fairly short walk. You shouldn't have any uh, you shouldn't have any big issues, but you should still give yourself a few minutes to be able to uh, make that track. Uh, Jimmy, that was most helpful. Uh, I don't know what I would do without this picture that you had. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. That's great. Again, I, I, unfortunately, the, uh, the the machines here aren't quite as uh, aren't quite as up to speed with the. Uh, quad mochas that I've got going on right okay. back here. Okay. Well, anyway, thank you very much. Uh, I just wanted to share a glimpse of this. I have a session today, uh, a couple of hours from now, where we're going to dig into all the other features of communication server feature, you know, from everything from E911 support, policy for call admission control, PowerShell, and a whole lot of other enterprise voice features. Great. Thanks a lot, Gurdip. Thanks, Bob. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye -bye. Thanks. So we will be shipping that later this year. <laughs> um, we're very excited. We're very excited about the potential capabilities, though, that, that this environment brings. As, as Gurdip said, we have switched over uh, the vast majority of our, our conference calling to communication server inside Microsoft. We're saving millions of dollars a year by doing that. Uh, people are now going, traveling around the world, using their laptops to communicate back to, to friends and, and, and coworkers. Again, saving phenomenal amounts of money uh, in, uh, in, in long distance voice calls. And we're very excited by the new scenarios that will be enabled uh, with high definition video and, and all sorts of new collaboration scenarios that, that will come with the next version of communication server. So,